Hello, this is Paul from Foresight Tech. In chapter two, we define what is derivatives, and uh, right now we go into chapter three, and which is the most important chapter in CalC one. In this chapter, we are going to learn the major differentiation rules, which will guide us to find the derivatives. Okay, you can see a lot of topics, and in this video, we just are going to. Deal with the derivative of polynomial functions. Let me see. Okay, so first we need to go to develop some general rules. Okay, which will help us to find out what the derivative for polynomial. And uh, please be patient. We have a lot of rules to learn here. Okay, so. And uh, the first, so here is the, the first, and there is a, we call it the constant function, and the, the rule give us the derivative for for any constant number, constant function, which means a constant number, a constant number take a derivative is zero. Uh, this is a natural why, because a constant function is just a horizontal line. And which has a, a horizontal tangent line, so the slope for the tangent line is zero, right? Horizontal, therefore the derivative is zero. Or you can use the de uh, definition. So can you see the first step is just the definition, right? The derivative functions, and then you plug into the value. See what do you have? You will have a c minus c, which is zero. And the limit therefore is zero, of course. And uh, now the second, the second day is the most important that in this topic today. Okay, so we call the power rule. Uh, what does the power rule tell us about? Tell us uh, the derivative of a power function is still a power function, but uh, modified later. The, can you see x raised to the nth power? N is the power. So what is the power here for any real number? Okay, any real number. This power function take a derivative. What do we need to do? Take the power down, right? And then the new power is the old power minus one, which means the derivative of a power function is the power. Okay, but the power or the exponent goes down to one. And uh, we are going to prove this later. Okay, so first, uh, how do you use this formula? That's very important. Okay, for calculation, so I'll give you one, two, three, four examples. So we're going to one by one. So how about the first? Okay, that the beginning. So let me go to see. Uh, is this x raised to the fifth power is a power function? Yes, of course, right. So the power is five, which means n is five. Okay, and uh, we can directly use. Okay, we can directly use the power uh, rule. So first step, take down the power. So we take down the power. We put the five here. The second step is the a power function, but the new power is uh, goes down one from the old. So five minus one, right? So we can see. The older power is five, so therefore five minus one is four. So four is the new power. So we put the new power here. Okay. So we just do these basic two steps. Take the power down, and the, the power minus one, we get the new power. Okay. That's all. And the second question should be the same, similar, right? And we see is negative power, but don't worry. Because for any real number, right? So we can and also you can see is a one point decimal, but it still works. Okay, so we use the power rule. The first step, take down the power. The old power is negative one point four or okay, we take it down, and then times I guess raised to new power. Now what is the new power? So is the old power negative one point four? And go down the one minus one equals negative two point four. Okay, so therefore the new power is negative two point four. Okay, so did the results look is uh, much easier, right? And uh, however, look at these two questions. Okay, so this form did not give us the power form. 
but you know this is a power. Okay, so what the name of the function? So square root is a radical. This radical is of course is a power. The power is one half, right? If you remember the definition. Okay, so our directly going to the power. I will change x square root of x to x raised to the one half power. Can you see they are the same? And then we're going to take a divide. Now is good. It's almost the same as the first questions. Power function take a derivative, which is the power rule, right? Okay, so two steps. Take down the power, which means one half. And then the new power is the older power minus one. One half minus one. What do we get? We get a negative one half. Okay. Um we don't like this form. Okay, we can use the x the negative exponent. We wrote it into another form, which is one over two times the square root of x. And then we wrote it here. So I just remind you because the square root of x take a derivative is very popular in the future. Okay, we always use in the future you don't need to go to the middle step. Just to memorize the results. Okay, we would directly use it in the future. Okay. And uh, one more popular functions is a reciprocal functions. A reciprocal function is the same as a uh, the square root, we also can do what? We also can write these reciprocal functions as a power functions. So what is the power? You know, negative one, okay? So this is a negative exponent, take a derivative. So how to do now is the same, okay? The first step, take it down, the power, negative one. And then negative one minus one goes to negative two, right? Okay, so you see, the new power is negative two. Uh, but we still don't like this form. We like another form. Okay, we change this to positive. We change this to positive power, which means we get a negative one over I guess raised to the second power. Okay, it's similar as a square root of function. And these reciprocal functions goes to negative one over x squared. And these are also very popular. Okay, so in the future you just memorize memorize the results directly use. I recommend you to memorize these both results. Let me see how to prove now. Okay. Um I give you my proof here, but this proof is not for a general n. Okay, for a general power. Can you see? Uh, I only prove the positive integer for n, okay? For the general proof, uh, we need uh, other knowledge in the future. After we learn the logarithmic differentiation, we're going to show you in the future. So now we deal with positive uh, integer n. How to prove? Okay, so later you will see the only one formula you need. <coughs> so first we do this way. So we set up uh, f is the power function, x raised to the nth power. Remember this power is a positive integer, okay? And then we're going to prove the power rule. What does it mean? And this take a derivative is the power. Um, we are going to use uh, this definition. Therefore, we not put the x here. We change the x into uh, another another variable, so I use a. So we're going to find the derivative at a. And then can you look at the beginning here? Is the derivative at a. And then look at the end. We are going to n times a raised to the n minus one's power. Because a is any number, okay? So a is any variable, any number. If we change x back, that's exactly the proof, okay? Um, now, so I already should do the middle. So I just uh, uh, introduce a leader for a new formula. You probably are not familiar before, okay? So what is the derivative at a? Here is the definition, one of the definition we learned in chapter two, right? And the plug f and the f inside, we get this term is a fraction, okay? The limit of a fraction. 
you know this is water. So if we directly plug x equals a, we get a zero over zero. Is an indefinite form, right?、Uh, is a indeterminable form, indeterminate form, which means we need to deal with it another way. And、uh, I show you one way is just to cancel the comma factor, but we need a formula. So I highlight here in a red one. The name we call the difference of nth power, and you know if n equals two, that's very famous. Okay, if n equals two, that's what that we call the 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 difference of、uh, squares, right? If n equals three is the difference of cube. Okay, n equals four is the difference of fourth power. N equals ten is the difference of tenth power. What is the formula? The formula is here. We can find one factor is the difference between x and a. Another factor is a long term. Okay. Uh, but don't worry. We have a, a pattern in this big term, and in the middle you see three dots, which means we just ignore the middle term because we, from here we see the pattern. And what is the pattern? The pattern is uh, uh, the power of x go down. N minus one minus two minus three. I guess one's power, zero's power, and the power of a is goes up. See here, no a, which means zero. One, two, the power, the power of n minus one, the power of n minus uh n minus two minus one. And if you add the power for each term together, is also get n minus one. Okay, so here is the pattern. <coughs> um, this is probably a new formula for you. How to verify this formula? Easy, okay.、Uh, I just leave these questions to you to finish. How to do distribute? Distribute the x. We have a lot of term, and then distribute the a. We have a lot of term. Then we cancel most of the term, and then we get a two term left, which is x to the n minus a raised to the n. Okay. <laughs> Now, if we have this formula, easy. Now, what to do? Uh, we have x minus a. X minus a is a comma factor. What are we going to do? We cancel, right? We cancel. We cancel the comma factor. See what do we get? We get this term, the big term left. The big term is a polynomial, so which is a continuous, right? We can directly substitute. So substitute the x. X. Okay, so we get this. Okay, you can imagine by the product rule, each term is the same. A raised to the n minus one. How many terms? You can go and find. Okay, so I guess one's power da 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 goes to n minus one's power. Okay, so from here you can see from here is one. Uh, from the x, so one's power, two's power da 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 goes to n minus one's power plus the last one power. Therefore, we have n terms. Okay. N term, therefore, the final answer is n times a raised to the n minus one's power. That does make sense, okay? N same terms added together is n times the term, okay? So now is the proof, okay? And、uh, for、uh, another property, we can see now. Okay, so here is another property. And、uh, this is the、uh, hold yes. So now we find, and this we call the constant multiple rule. Okay, is important the rule.、Uh, what does this mean? And、uh, so hold yes. So now good. Uh, this constant multiple rule tell us, and if we use a constant number times a function. We call the constant the multiple of f, right? And the take divide of c. What do we get? You don't need to take divide over to c. Okay, you just the fact the c out. This is the root us. Or someone you can say this, and the, the derivative of a constant multiple is the constant multiple of the derivative. Okay, right? And the, I will going to prove later. So first,、uh, how to use this? Okay, the root give us if we have a c, you just factor c out. Okay, so in this example, so f is x with the fifth power, a power function. We know the derivative, but how about the two? 
two is like C, right? A constant number. You what we do is factor the two out. Okay, follow the constant multiple rule. Okay, it's good. I was going to show. I just wrote here. And uh, if I wrote, it should be this simple way. So first, uh, I wrote the two, and the second, uh, what to do? What the left? I guess so is to the fifth power left, right? Take a divider. Can you see? And then now we factor the two out, right? Two from inside that goes outside. Now what do we do? Because the power take a divider where we know it's right. Therefore the power rule. Okay, I directly use the power rule. We have two times five. Do you remember the power rule? This is a power function, take it down the power. And then the power minus one, we get the new power. So the new power five minus one is four. Okay, this is power rule, right? And the two times five is ten. Therefore, we have ten times x raised to the first power. See, here is the results. <coughs> and uh, now we need to prove this. How to prove? You will see it's easy. We don't need to exactly use the limit. Okay, and we just do simple. We just use the definitions. Okay, we just use the definition. Um, how do you do? And the uh, first, uh, what do we need to prove? Imagine, so we have a C times F. So we set up uh, this is a bigger term as a capital F X, and then we need to take a derivative to this bigger term. Therefore, we take a derivative to F capital F. Okay, we finally we need to go to the constant multiple of derivative, right? So here. How do you go from start to the end? You know the definition only. So I'm going to use the definition here is the rise over the run, dy over dx, right? Okay. So capital F we know evaluate per log in. We have these two terms, and the c times this f minus c times this f. So c is the common factor. Factor out. Okay. Factor out the c is the other constant that does not. Related to the limit, right? Remember the limit law. Okay, the constant number can factor out again. So finally, we're going to this term. Okay, so this is already the answer. Why? Because this limit is just the divider. Okay, we use the definition. So it's simple to verify. So this is correct for the constant multiple rule. And、uh, we have a few rules. Now we move to another. So can we look at this rule? And this time, the rule we call it sum rule. What does it mean?、Um, if we have、uh, add two functions, if we add two functions, we get the sum. Now we take the derivative of the sum. See, you can just distribute the derivative to f, distribute the derivative to g. Okay, what does that mean? And the rule gave us all we need to do. Just take a derivative, separate it, which means we can separate the two terms. Okay, find the derivative, separate it, then add them together. Uh, yeah, in other words, is this the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivative. Okay, or some say it's just distributed. Okay, the derivative to both sides, to both functions. Um, I was going to prove, of course. But first,、uh, going to use how to use this.、Uh, we take example. So for f is a power. For g, I also give a power, and then add the two power together. Can you see? Okay, this is the sum. Take a derivative. Is the derivative of the sum a derivative of、uh, the sum of the derivative, right? So our going to do is this way. <coughs> um, and、uh, if we follow the sum rule, the Distributed derivative. Let me write the one more step. I guess、uh, fifth. This is the first function, right? Take a derivative, and the, the second function also take a derivative. See, this is a distributed derivative to the first, distributed derivative to the second. Okay. So now, what do we do? This is a power. So that's a power rule, right? I will directly use the power rule, which means a、uh, Five times x to the fourth power, right? The power minus one. These two, the power minus one, which is one, 
is a one we just say ignore so we get it to x the power one which means uh, the power one um use this is easy now we deal with how to prove okay so the same as the last uh, constant multiple what do we need to do use the basic definition okay so we don't need to do a lot i already proved it here you can just have a look so first uh, we set up uh, f plus g is a capital f okay we're going to try to simplify okay so and uh, the sum the divided with the sum which means the divided over the capital f so and they look at the end should the b proof is the sum of the divided right from the beginning to the end all we need to do in the middle use the definition and then manipulate a little bit so the first definition is here right that's delta y over delta x we use the definition and then evaluate the capital f at x plus h is this bigger two terms because capital f is two terms added together then minus capital f at x is these two terms do you remember at the end we have to separate the f and the g okay so therefore we separate the f and the g just a group f and a group g if we group this f minus this f put here if we group this g and this g we put here and then we have a one big fraction separated into two fractions you know right okay it that doesn't make sense just uh, what we need to do okay is just uh, separate the f and the g after we separate the two terms take a limit the limit law give us is the limit of two terms can you see the first term is the divided of f the second term is the divided of g okay so therefore is a proof it's super easy you just separate the f and the g one more term can we look at uh, this rule is what the difference rule okay all we need to do and this time so we do the difference of two functions take a derivative is the difference of the derivative can you see it's a very very similar as the sum rule okay of course for the different for the subtractions no big difference to the addition okay uh, later we can't prove we just uh, use the sum rule and the uh, constant multiple rule we easy to prove but the first uh, how to use of course it's the same so let me look at this f minus g take a derivative is a distributor so they are the same distributed parameter to here distributed parameter to here okay and then do the subtraction so i was going to see okay so is what is uh, i guess the first power the first term take a divide out so minus therefore here is a steer minus okay so the second term take a divide out which is a x take a divide out okay i was going to do now easy there's a power there's a power use power rule so take it down the power and then the power minus one which is three right minus and the this is no power which means one one take it down one is the other one we ignore and then what one minus one can you see what do we get we get a zero okay uh no one will write it this way i guess read the zero okay is one so we wrote this okay just copy and then minus one okay so here i just say show you one result in the future is uh frequently used i guess the ticket divided is one right i guess ticket divided is one okay i put here i guess take a derivative to x is one in the future we are we will use this frequently so just memorize and then now we're going to prove so how to prove i said we just use the basic okay the sum and the constant multiple so how to do so the this is the subtraction we wrote the subtraction uh, let me see here the subtraction we wrote it into the addition okay which means what uh, which means uh, the second term is a negative g right negative one time g is negative g and then now what do we have we have the sum rule to use okay so distribute the 
prime to the first, uh, distribute the prime to the second. Now we look at the second term. Second term is a constant uh, multiple uh, of g, right? So we use the constant uh, multiple rule. Therefore, negative one factored out is minus, and the g take a divide out. Can you see? That's the proof. Okay. Um, and uh, now almost <laughs> most of the property we learned. Okay, we deal with. So we have uh, one more here. This is not a new. We just uh, merge. Okay, we just uh, merge or compound the sum rule and the constant multiple rule together. And then we call the linear property, or we call the linearity. Okay, and can you see what is the linearity tell us? So a b is a constant number. F g is a function. So a x plus g b g. This we call the linear combination of two functions. Can you see the left? The left is the derivative of the linear combination. The right. So take a derivative first, and then do linear combination. Which means uh, the right is the linear combination of the derivative. Therefore, I wrote the sentence here. Uh, linear property, which means uh, what? The derivative of linear combination is the linear combination of the derivatives. Okay. Uh, another way you can just uh, simply say is distributed the prime to only f and g. Forget about the a b. Okay. Um, so I will prove later using the sum rule, the constant multiple rule. Linear property is very important. Okay, definitely for differentiation. Why? Because in the future, when you learn calc two, uh, when you learn uh, the integration in calc two, and you will find the same linear property. Okay, going to integrals. Okay. Uh, let me look at these questions. How to prove? Oh no, no, sorry. And so, how to practice the linear property? Do you remember linear property means what? Distributed this prime to f, which is I guess uh, raised to the third power. Distributed this prime to x to g, which is x, right? Okay. Then we have the linear combination of the uh, power function. Okay. Because the power take a derivative is their power. Okay, so now all we need to do is just do this. We're going to use. So how do you use? Okay, so distribute this parameter to x to the third. So two is their two, right? Okay, and uh, I was going to x to the third power take a derivative. And then plus, of course, is the plus. And the three is the three. Okay, what is g is x. So we put x. Take a derivative. Can you see? Here is a plus three, so it's the plus three. Someone imagine if it's minus three, so here is the minus three. Okay, it's the same. And uh, now is the what? Power rule. Okay, so I directed it. If someone you are familiar, I skip one step. This take it down is three. Two times three is what is six. Is just a six. I guess we did the second power, and then plus three. Do you remember we just did? The, I guess take the value is one, right? So just plus three. Okay, it's already. And uh, how do you prove? So we just say compound the sum rule and the constant multiple rule. This is the way. We just simply have a look. So the linear combination take the value. So if we see a f is a capital F is a big function, b times g is a capital G, which means uh, the sum. So that's the derivative of the sum is sum rule. Okay. The second step, of course, a times f is constant multiple. So you pick a out, and the particular uh, and they the take b out. Therefore, can you see is the a linear combination of the derivatives? Okay. <coughs> And uh, we finally going to the polynomial. Okay, so we finally going to the polynomial. So how do you say? Uh, what is? Okay, and what is the results tell us? And the, the results says uh the derivative of a polynomial function is the uh, polynomial functions. Okay, but the degree decreased one. Why? 
you can just imagine what. And later I will going to uh, show you example like here. Okay, you just imagine polynomial is just a linear combination of power. Okay, if you're going to take a derivative, what do you do? Use linear property first, and then the second is the power, right? So that's a power rule. Okay, all you we need to do is just combine these two rules, so we can exactly resolve what is the derivative for polynomial. I show one example here, and later we have uh, another three example. We're going to practice. Okay, so first. Uh, is this polynomial? Yes. What's the degree? 4. And the, these results tell us and the later the derivative should be decreased the power 1, which means the power should be goes to 3. Okay, we are going to see why. Okay, so first, uh, so that's a linear combination, right? See, that's a constant, the constant. So the power, I guess. Residual force is power, a power, power. So we use the linear property. Let me write here. All we need to do first, we use the linear property, uh, which is uh, the linearity. Okay, I will just say linearity. So I use the linearity. Okay. The linearity, we have three, right? And uh, this is take a derivative. Distribute the prime to the power functions, and then plus two, and distribute the prime, the derivative to here, and then minus five, minus five, which means plus negative five, but it's still the same. Okay, prime. Okay, and then minus a. Take the derivative. See, this is the linearity. Now you know what to do. Power rule, right? Each term is a power, okay? So that's a power rule to do. And if we use the power rule, I think uh, now you will get what? 3 times what? 4, take down the power. I guess raised to the third power, right? Okay, the second day is do the same way. Take down 3, and then 3 minus 1, always. And the you remember the results. I guess the take a prime is a one, right? So that's a five, just a times a one. Constant that take a derivative is zero, so minus zero. Okay, and then what? And then, uh, sorry, let me see. I will going to erase this. Constant that take a derivative is zero. Okay, so now we just simplify. What do we get? We get a twelve x the third power plus 6 x the second power minus 5 okay the 0 we cannot so does this the degree is degree into 3 definitely right can you see you can see at the beginning the degree is what at the beginning the degree is 4 at the end is what the degree equals 3 Okay, and of course, the answer is still polynomial, right? Okay, so you know the result is correct. And uh, we have three examples left. Not many. Pay attention. And be patient with me. So how do you differentiate? Differentiate, which means to find the derivative, okay? To find the derivative of this function, what is this function? This is exactly a polynomial, right? We just did the one. So for the same way, first linear property, second power rule. Okay, so I was going to do. <coughs> this is just the normal way. Okay, the very, very normal functions. So the first step, uh, I was going to find the derivative. The first step is linear property. Okay, we figured out. Uh, take a divide of right and then minus 2.5 t square take a divide of. can you see divide over to the linear combination is just divide over each function the constant the number does not matter and the plus 6.7 of course you know is this take a divide of. <laughs> okay so this is the linear property and now is the power. Each term is a power function. 
So what do we get? We get a 1.4 times 5t raised to the first power, power rule, minus 2.5 times 2t, once power, okay, power rule. Constant the number has the divided by 0. And then simplify is 7t raised to the first power, the first. The second is 5 times t. See, super easy to get. Okay, so these are the first questions. We have uh, another two more questions. Now look at it. You will say, this looks strange. I should easy example to you, so how to deal with this type. <coughs> um, this we have a parenthesis, but uh, if someone you know, the FOIA, remember the FOIA, right? Expanded the terms. We use a FOIA to distribute the distributor, and then what do we get? Imagine, what do we get? We will get a polynomial, right? Okay, therefore, even you look at this term, it looks not good to do, but after you expand, you will get a polynomial. If you have a polynomial, and then what to do? Linear property and the power rule, you will get the answer. Okay, so now I will con just going to do this. Uh, follow the basic idea. We use FOIA to expand. Uh, the major one, let me show you here, is what is expand. Okay, so this is the most important. Uh, how do you do? We use a FOIA, if you remember this. What is a FOIA? FOIA is like this, distribute and distribute, right? Okay, so the inner distribute and the last we distribute. So after we distribute, see what do we get? I will get this. H is the name of the function. U is the variable. So we have the first is 3U square. And the outer is uh, 3, 6 times u, right? The inner is negative u. The last is negative 2. Uh, of course, don't stop it here. We can compound like a term. 6u minus u is uh, 5u. Okay, so what do we get? We get a 3u squared plus 5 times u minus 2. What this polynomial? So, right, is exactly what we we just uh, expected. Okay, this is a, a polynomial. Okay, this is a polynomial. Now we know how to find the derivative of h. Find the derivative of a polynomial. So we use a linear property first. Right. Let me see. So h take the derivative is what is a 3 parenthesis u square this power take a derivative right plus 5 uh, u going to uh, take a derivative okay so this is the second term take a derivative the last term take a derivative is minus 2 take a derivative see what the name this is a linear property uh, let me use a uh, Linear, linearity, okay, it's a linearity, it's just a linear property. Now is what? Power rule, right? Okay, so I directly use the power rule. Okay, so now is the power rule. See, what do we get? Use the power rule, I get a 3 times, take the power down, and then u, once power, right? And the 5 times, Remember this, you take a derivative is just go to 1, okay, just 1. A constant take a derivative is 0. So what is the answer? The answer is 6 times u plus 5, okay, equal not 0. See, that's a steel polynomial, but the degree goes down 1. One more question, be patient. Look at one more new type. What is this type? Hmm, strange. This is not a polynomial, okay? But if someone you remember, uh, um, if someone in the future you will s uh, learn another rule, so we call it uh, quotient rule because this is a fraction, 
Okay, fractions quotient. If you learn the quotient rule, you have another tool to find. But so far, the only tool you have is what the power, right? And the general rule. Um, it's not a polynomial, but we can do what we can expand this there. And this one fraction expand into three fractions, and each fraction is what is a power. Okay, therefore, we still use the power rule, and of course, uh, the linear property that we get. So the basic idea first is expand, and then the merged like term merged x uh, by the quotient rule, and then we can make a, a power functions for each term. Therefore, we can use the power rule. Okay, so let me write down. It's very similar as the second questions. Mm, so all we need to do, do the same. I just do this expand so there. Of course, it's expanded into uh, like a power function. Okay, so let me go to see if we expand this. See what do we get. And I was going to write all the details. You can see. Okay, I expand into three terms. The first term is x square over square root of x. The second term is 4x over square root of x. The third term is 3 over square root of x. Okay, why we do this? Because each term is a power. But how? Okay, so first we have to change the square root into a power, which is half, right? The power is a half. Let me write down the first is x square over what? x raised to the one half is power. Okay, the same for the second uh, term. Over x raised to the one half, the same for the last term. Is x raised to the one half is power. Now, what do we do? Do you remember? We have this. We have a quotient rule. Okay. Quotient rule of x Poland that you learned that before. We use this, we do subtraction. Okay, so after two subtract the one half, two minus one half is a three over two. Okay, therefore I direct the root. This is x three three over two. It's power. So here is a four times what one minus one half is a one half. Therefore we have uh, one half as a power. What is the power? Is this negative exponent negative one half okay so we plus three times x negative one half power so far is good why because this is a power this is a power this is also a power therefore is a linear combination of power how to do linear rule first linear property first and then the power rule okay so i just put here so now almost okay so we're going to do this up here and uh, so why take a derivative now i can use the linear property the first term take a derivative the second term take a derivative okay the constant number don't care the linear property they ask that and this constant term don't care okay and take a derivative see what this this is just a linear property and each term is a power okay so we use power rule take down the power and the power minus one which is a one half right plus and this take down the power uh, if you like I can put the parenthesis okay and then still put the parenthesis first take down the power and take a minus a one which is a negative one half right and the last is the same three times take down the power minus one so we go to negative three over two okay so we simplify a little bit almost okay 
so this one was two and the four times one half we get two right one negative one half and this is negative so minus three over two i guess negative three over two is the power this is the final answer and that's all thank you Okay, so I hope you learn all the rules about uh, about the polynomial, okay, the basic. If you have any questions about this topic, please leave your comments. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Okay, and you can see here. And in the next video, we are going to deal with the derivative of natural exponential functions. Thank you. Have a good have a have a nice day. Bye.